Techno, right? It's been almost six months now since the GoPro Hero 9 Black was announced. How have those six months gone? Today, we're gonna talk about the, the good, the bad, and the, the sometimes very ugly from the past six months with the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Before we do though, hit that like button for me, helps out this video a ton. And let's quickly talk about the sponsor for today's video, which if you're here for GoPros or action cameras in general, uh, is snap mounts. I know I've mentioned snap mounts on this channel a ton and it's been awesome to to recommend them, to see you guys get them and then you guys reach out to me and be like, dude, this thing is dope. I use it all the time. I love that. And if you don't know what they are yet, snap mounts, it's, it's basically this base unit bit that you strap your action camera to. And once you have it on here, now your action camera can magnet to anything, but in particular, it can magnet to their special attachments that you can put on all your different mounts. So I have one on my handle. I got it in my, my car. This is a suction cup mount that goes in my windshield. So it's kind of like that in my windshield. And then I use the bite mount all the time. I know you guys make fun of me, but that's okay. I love the bite mount. And instead of having to unscrew the thumb screw and put it into each of these three mounts, since I have the snap mounts on there, I power like this and go boom. And now it's on the bite mount. And then to get it off, I just pop it off and boom. Now it's in my car windshield, pop it out of there and boom, I'm walking around with the pole and I'm vlogging, talking to my GoPro. If you guys want one, first link in the description and check out their pro kit. Cause the pro kit comes with a base, comes with one base, two of the GoPro, like the accessories that have the feet on them. And then it comes with this lanyard bit that gives you another one of these, but it doesn't have the, the two pronged bit on there. Any of you guys that have already gotten the snap mounts, comment below so other people can see how dope they really are. Okay, so six months later with the GoPro Hero 9 Black, how's it been? First, let's look at the good. What's What's been great about the GoPro Hero 9? First up is that 5K. The 5K, it, it looks good. It is super, super detailed. You can actually see a significant difference between the 5K and the 4K from the Hero 8. It's just, just that little extra bit of sharpness, little extra bit of crispness, but not sharpness, but it's it's actual detail in the image. There's a difference between detail and sharpness and 5K gives you detail. I've actually found that in almost all modes in the Hero 9, I put sharpness to low and I put the EV comp to negative 0.5. So that gives me the best image that when I pull it into post, if it is just a touch dark, I can brighten it a little bit. And if it's a touch unsharpened or, or not sharp enough rather, I can add some sharpening to it. But with medium or high sharpness, sometimes it just starts looking super crispy and digital, like not a good crispy, but just a very digital crispy. And then when I leave the EV comp to zero, sometimes the, the highlights blow out. And it's really hard. Once you kind of try to pull them back, it looks kind of wonky in those highlights. So for me, 5K, 24 frames a second, EV comp set to negative 0.5 and sharpness set to low at all times in all modes. And then of course, 4K at 60 frames a second, 2.7K at 120 frames a second, and 1080 at 240 frames a second. They they all look pretty good. 240 frames a second looks a little meh. Just loses a little bit of detail at 1080, 240, but, but really I almost never find myself going slower than 120 frames a second. And at 2.7K, 120 frames a second, it looks, it looks real good. Next up on the good side is, is that that front screen. I love the front screen. People, you say what you will about front screens. I love them. Even if you're not vlogging per se, but you are, you're shooting in front of the camera at all, or, or even if you, let's say I mount this on my car, right? I, I magnetize this to my car or I have some kind of mounting system where the GoPro is backed up to something. I can see my shot. I can still frame my shot because of that front screen. Now I like it because I talk to my camera a lot like I'm doing right now. So for me to be able to walk around and we can actually see her, I can make sure that Morgan and Eleanor are actually framed in the shot as opposed to just kind of walking around staring at it. And then when someone else is there, I'm like, Am I, am I, are we both in it? Is it, I think I'm like, I'm like pointing in between us. Are we both in it? Are we there? Give me that front screen and I can, I can frame my shot perfectly. You can, you can look at like, I can point to things. I can be like, hey, look, look over here. Look what's going on over there. It's amazing and I love it. And the sweet thing about the GoPro's front screen over, over the Osmo Action's front screen was the Osmo Action, you can only do one screen at a time. So you have to choose front screen or rear screen. With the GoPro Hero 9 Black, I can have the front screen and the rear screen on at the same time. Because a lot of times I'm, I'm filming this way and then I quickly go like this and then I quickly go back to it 
and I, I don't wanna have to push a button or push and hold a button to get it to switch. Yeah, but the front screen on the GoPro 9, they did it real good. Okay, next up is HyperSmooth 3.0 and it's, it's the HyperSmooth that we were waiting, like when we first got HyperSmooth and they were like, it's a gimbal killer, it was good, it was really good. But now HyperSmooth 3.0, legitimately a gimbal killer. I don't know why you would put a GoPro onto a gimbal now. It has HyperSmooth 3.0, it has that horizon leveling that you can go into where you can basically turn the camera almost 30 degrees before the horizon moves. So the camera is doing this, and the horizon stays perfectly flat. And then of course we can add in that max lens mod and with the max lens mod, you give 360 degree stabilization. So with the, hang on. So with that max lens mod on there, again, an extra hundred dollars for the max lens mod. But once you have it, you can now go 360 degrees all the way around, just like you can do on the little tiny Insta360 Go. But you can now do that on your GoPro all the way around and the horizon stays perfectly level. It's kind of a trip and it works really well. Again, you do have to spend $100 to get the Max Lens Mod on top of a $450 camera, but but it works, just a little pricey. I guess I should mention the replaceable lens. That's also a good for the Hero 9 Black. It's been great, it's been great to have it. I haven't messed one up yet, but it's been nice to know that if I did jack up the lens cover, I would just swap out the lens cover and not lose my whole GoPro like the Hero 8. All right, next up in the, the good category, but it's good, but kind of good because I haven't used it once, is Hindsight Recording. Hindsight Recording, I was very excited about when it was launched. I was like, oh, that's so rad. It's recording before I even hit the record button so that if I miss a moment, if something happens and I go, oh shoot, and I hit the record button, I actually capture that time because it was recording before I hit record. Yeah, I, I haven't used it a single time. Maybe, I mean, I still might. I still might use it if I end up needing it and then it would be amazing. It's kind of one of those features. It's like an insurance policy, right? Like it's cool if you need it, but if you don't ever need it, ah. But we'll put that in the good category because yet to be seen. Six months in, I have not used hindsight recording yet. All right, that's the good, let's, let's get to the bad. And, and the first bad, is a bad that I didn't think was gonna be bad, and it's it's the size. When it first came out, I saw that it it was larger than the Hero 8. Hang on. So again, like we like I showed you, like I showed you when they were announced, it's a it's a bit bigger, pretty much in every dimension. In every dimension, the Hero 9 is larger than the Hero 8. And and when I was first holding them, I was like, it's not that big of a deal. They're they're similar enough. Like it's it's close enough. But now that I've had it for a while, it's it's kind of like the iPhone Max. I I bought the iPhone 11 Pro Max because I was like it's not that much bigger. It's it's just a little bigger and it's a bigger screen and has a better battery life. It'll be better. And then I had the Max for a little while and I went, this is terrible. This is way too big. I wish I had that smaller iPhone. That's kind of how I feel with the, the Hero 9. It's, it's not that it's ginormous. It's just that the Hero 8 in comparison feels so small. I'm also comparing the Osmo Action, which is smaller than both of these. I mean, look at the Osmo Action versus the Hero. Look how big this is compared to this little guy. Like now we're, now you're really seeing a big size difference. The Hero 9 is significantly bigger than the Osmo Action. It's bigger than the Hero 8. Where's this Hero 7? They've kind of gone up in size every year. So the 7 was small, the 8 got bigger, and then the 9, the 9 got even bigger. And I think with action cameras, we, we expect them to be small. Like we've had these teeny, t the 7, wow, the 7 really feels small now. Holy cow, that thing feels tiny. Yeah, hard to hard to describe just by looking at them, but man, when you feel the nine, you just go, ah, it's too big. All right, next up in the bad category is loss of recording and previewing at the same time. So what you've always been able to do with, with all of these cameras, all three of these cameras, the seven, the eight, the Osmo Action, you can pull up in the app, you can connect the app to your phone, you can hit record, and then you can actually see what the camera is recording. So let's say you, you mounted your GoPro Hero 8 somewhere, I don't know, like up, 
high in a corner or something like that. And then from here, you can hit record and you can see what it's recording. Or if you had this on the outside of your car, it's recording, you're watching what it's actually being recorded and that's awesome. With the Hero 9, they, they got rid of that. With the Hero 9, you can see a preview of the camera, but as soon as you hit record, the preview goes blank on the app and it just says preview unavailable or preview not available. So again, you can you can see the shot, you can have it up there, you can be like, okay, that's the angle, you hit record and then you, you can't see anything while it's actually recording. Whereas on all three of these cameras, the seven, the eight and the Asmo Action, you can do that. I don't know why, I don't understand it. Maybe it's a processor issue, maybe it just can't do that much at once, but even from at like 1080, it still can't do it. So yeah, I don't get it. It's also one of those things where you don't know how much you, you liked it or how great it was until you lost it. Cause obviously I don't do that a lot, but the times that I do, I'm like, ah, crap. I got the wrong camera. I should have grabbed my Hero 8 today. Okay, I think that's all there is for the, the bad. Let's finish this off with the ugly. What's What's been ugly about the last six months of this camera? It's buggy. It is. It has been so frustratingly buggy for the last six, and I've been I've been trying to give them grace and patience and say, hey, I know a firmware update's coming. You guys are gonna fix it. And there were firmware updates, and, and it was still buggy, and it would freeze up on me, especially if I was recording a clip. I was recording like something like four or five minutes, and then I hit end record, it would just sit there for a long time sometimes. And sometimes it would actually record that clip and it would finally unfreeze. And sometimes it was just totally frozen. I had to do the old GoPro power reset, which is to, to open the door, pull the battery out, put the battery back in, close the door, and hey, my GoPro works again. But you usually lost that last clip. And it's kind of always been, it's always been a thing with GoPro. The thing with GoPros is, it's an awesome camera. It's a little cool action camera, but it's probably not the camera that you count on just because it can be buggy and it can be unreliable and you might lose a clip or, or the camera might just freeze up altogether and, and you gotta do the battery reset. But yeah, the, the freeze ups have been bad. Two, little over two weeks ago, there was a firmware update, 1.52. And that seems seems to have done the most to fix that. I've had a few little odd things happen with it since in the last couple of weeks, but for the most part, firmware update 1.52. So make sure your GoPro is fully updated to that. Uh, it seems to have, have stabilized things a little bit. But lastly, and and the, the ugliest or, or the most, the thing that's caused me the most frustration, because you would think, that the camera freezing and me losing clips might might be the most frustrating or that would sound like the thing in actual use case that has been just mind numbingly frustrating about the Hero 9 has been the touch screen. I don't know what it is about this touch screen, but man, it is so unresponsive to when I first got it, when it first came out, I was like, yo, they need to do a firmware update fast because you, you almost couldn't use it. Like you would try to scroll down and then this, it would go brrr, and it would roll back to the top and it was terrible. It has gotten significantly better with firmware updates. Again, firmware 1.52 that came out like I think two and a half weeks ago, we'll say. That did the most to the touch screen as well. And I would say that it was five and a half months of pure frustration. And then the last two weeks is when I'm like, oh yeah, this is working much better. It still doesn't, it's still like not as snappy. It's like not as, it's like not as responsive as, as touch screens that came out well before. It. Oh, that's, it's doing pretty good right there. That's actually impressive. This is the best I've seen it. That's, that's actually a lot better. 1.52 firmware seems to have helped significantly, but it was, it was five and a half months of real frustration, especially again, because cameras like this, the Osmo Action, the touchscreen was so good when it, it still is. It's such a stable camera. Everything just works. Everything's just snappy. This feels like I'm on my iPhone, you know, like the things just work. And this feels like I'm on a Windows computer. And I really hope that, that GoPro continues to come out with firmware updates for the Hero 9. Make it more and more stable. Make the touchscreen more and more responsive. Make this the camera that, that we want. Because the thing is, is for $450, this is some insane quality. The image quality you can get out of this thing, the, the different features that it has for 450 bucks, it's it's a very impressive camera as, as long as it doesn't freeze up on you. 
uh, it has me thinking that maybe on paper, this is still the best action camera that's out there, but maybe it's not the best action camera. There's actually another action camera that I'm thinking of right now that might actually be a better action camera, even though it came out before this camera. On paper, this might be the best, but an actual use case, how you use an action camera, yeah, the things that matter aren't the things that are on paper. I'm gonna do some testing. I'm gonna do some testing in the next week or two with, with this camera and another camera. I won't tell you what it is yet, but maybe comment below. Comment below if you think you know what camera I'm thinking of that that might be better than the GoPro Hero 9. Is there already a camera out there that's better than the Hero 9 Black? Comment below. I'm very curious as to what you guys, I'm also very curious as to your experience with the Hero 9 Black, if you guys share some of these, these frustrations, honestly. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna compare this. I'm gonna compare this to a few cameras, maybe test a few of them out, see, see which one really comes out, not just on paper, but in actual usability. Yeah, all right. I'll see you guys soon.